चैप्टर फोर इन दी अर्ली सिटीज द स्टोरी ऑफ हरप्पा वेरी ऑफन ओल्ड बिल्डिंग्स हैव अ स्टोरी टू टेल नियरली अ हंड्रेड एंड फिफ्टी ईयर्स अगो वेन रेलवे लाइन्स वर बींग लेट डाउन फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम इन पंजाब इंजीनियर्स टम्बल्ड अपॉन द साइट ऑफ हरप्पा इन प्रेजेंट डे पाकिस्तान टू दैम इट सीम लाइक अ माउंट दैट वॉज रिच सोर्स ऑफ रेडी मेड हाई क्वालिटी ब्रिक्स so they carried up thousands of bricks from the walls of old buildings of the city to build railway lines mm. many buildings were completely destroyed then about 80 years ago archaeologists found the site and realized that this was one of the oldest cities in subcontinent as this was the first city to be discovered mm. all other sites from where similar buildings and other things were found were described as harappan these cities were developed about 4700 years ago What was special about these cities? Many of these cities were divided into two or more parts. Usually, the part to the west was smaller but higher. Archaeologists describe this as the citadel. Generally, the part to the east was larger but lower. This is called the lower town. Very often, walls of baked brick were built around each part. The bricks were so well baked that they had lasted for thousands of years. the bricks were laid in an interlocking pattern that made the walls strong mm-hmm. in some cities special buildings were constructed on the citadel mm-hmm. for example in mohenjodaro a very special tank which archaeologists call the great bath was built in this area this was lined with bricks coated with plaster and made water tight with a layer of natural tar mm-hmm. there were steps leading down to it from two sides while there were rooms on all sides water was probably brought in from a well and drained out after use perhaps important people took a dip in this tank on special occasions other cities such as kalibangan and lothal had fire altars where sacrifices may have been performed and some cities like mohenjodaro harappa and lothal had elaborate store houses houses drains and streets generally houses were either one or two stories high with rooms built around a courtyard most houses had a separate bathing area and some had wells to supply water many of these cities had covered drains notice how carefully these were laid out in straight lines although you cannot see it each drain had a gentle slope so that water could flow through it very often drains in houses were connected to those on the streets and smaller drains led into bigger ones as the drains were covered inspection holes were provided at intervals to clean them all three houses drains and streets were probably planned and built at the same time life in the city a harappan city was a very busy place there were people who planned the construction of special buildings in the city there were probably the rulers it is likely that the rulers set, sent people to distant lands to get life in the city a harappan city was a very busy place there were people who planned the construction of special buildings in the city these were probably the rulers it is likely that the rulers sent people to distant lands to get metal precious stones and other things that they wanted they may have kept the most valuable objects such as ornaments of gold and silver or beautiful beads for themselves and there were scribes people who knew how to write who helped prepare the seals and perhaps wrote on other materials that have not survived besides there were men and women craft persons making all kinds of things either in their own homes or in special workshops people were traveling to distant lands or returning with raw materials and perhaps stories many terracotta toys have been found and children must have played with these new crafts in the city let us look at some of the objects that were made and found in harappan cities most of the things that have been found by archaeologists are made of stone shell and metal including copper bronze gold and silver copper and bronze were used to make tools weapons ornaments and vessels 
gold and silver were used to make ornaments and vessels. Perhaps the most striking finds are those of beads, weights and plates. The Harappan had also made seals out of stone. These are generally rectangular and usually have an animal carved on them. The Harappans also made pots with beautiful black designs such as the one shown on page 6. Cotton was probably grown at Mehergarh from about 7000 years ago. Actual pieces of cloth were found attached to the lid of a silver vase and some copper objects at Mohenjo-daro. Archaeologists have also found spindle walls made of terracotta and faience. These were used to spin thread. Faience. Unlike stone or shell that are found naturally, faience is a material that is artificially produced. A gum was used to shape sand or powdered quartz into an object. The objects were then glazed resulting in a shiny glassy surface. The colors of the glaze were usually blue or sea green. Faience were used to make beads, bangles, earrings and tiny vessels. Many of the things that were produced were probably the work of specialists. A specialist is a person who is trained to do only one kind of work. For example, cutting stone or polishing beads or carving seeds. Look at the illustration on page 36 and see how well the face is carved and how carefully the beard is shown. This must have been the work of an expert craft person. Not everybody could have been a specialist. We do not know whether only men were specialists or only women were specialists. Perhaps some women and men may have been specialists. In search of raw material. Raw materials are substances that are either found naturally such as wood or ores of metals are produced by farmers or herders. These are then processed to produce finished goods. For example, cotton produced by farmers is a raw material that may be processed to make cloth, while some of the raw materials that the Harappans used were available locally. Many items such as copper, tin, gold, silver and precious stones had to be brought from distant places. The Harappans probably got copper from present-day Rajasthan and even from Oman in West Asia. Tin, which was mixed with copper to produce bronze, may have been brought from present-day Afghanistan and Iran. Gold could have come all the way from present-day Karnataka and precious stones from present-day Gujarat, Iran and Afghanistan. Food for people in the cities. While many people lived in cities, other lived in, lived in the countryside, grew crops and red animals. These farmers and herders supplied food to craft persons, scribes and rulers in the cities. We know from remains of plants that the Harappans grew wheat, barley, pulses, peas, rice, sesame, linseed and mustard. Mm. A new tool, the plough, was used to dig mm. the earth for turning the soil and planting seeds. Mm. While real ploughs, which were probably made of wood, have not survived, toy models have been found. Mm. All these regions does not receive heavy rainfall. Some form of irrigation may have been used. This means that water was stored and supplied to the fields when the plants were growing. The Harappans reared cattle, sheep, goat and buffalo. Water and pastures were available from around settlements. However, in the dry summer months, large herds of animals were probably taken to greater distances in search of grass and water. They also collected fruits like bear, caught fish and hunted wild animals like the antelope. A closer look, Harappan towns in Gujarat. The city of Dholavira was located on Khadir Bait, also spelled as Bet, in the run of Kutch, where there was fresh water and fertile soil. Unlike some of the other Harappan cities, which were divided into two parts, Dholavira was divided into three parts, and each part was surrounded with massive stone walls with entrances through gateways. There were also a large open area in the settlement where public ceremonies could be held. Other finds include large letters of Harappan script that were carved out of white stone and perhaps inlaid in wood. This is a unique find as generally Harappan writing has been found on small objects such as seals. Hmm. The city of Lothal stood beside a tributary of the Sabarmati in Gujarat close to the Gulf of Khambat. It was situated in areas where raw materials 
such as semi precious stones were easily available this was an important center for making objects out of stone shell and metal the, there were also a store house in the city many seals and ceilings the impression of seals on clay were found in the store house a building that was found here was probably a workshop for making beads pieces of stone half made beads tools for make for bead making and finished beads have all been found here seals and ceilings seals may have been used to stamp bags a packets containing goods that were sent from one place to another after a bag was closed and tied a layer of wet clay was applied on the knot and the seal was pressed on it the impression of the seal is known as sealing if the sealing was intact one could be sure that the goods had arrived safely the mystery of the end around 1300 years ago we find the beginning of a major change people stopped living in many of the cities writing seals and weights were no longer used raw materials brought from long distances became rare in mohenjo-daro we find that garbage piled up on streets the drainage system broke down and new less impressive houses were built even over the streets hmm. why did all this happen we are not sure some scholars suggest that the rivers dried up other suggest that there was forestation deforestation this could have happened because fuel was required for baking bricks and for smelting copper ores besides grazing by large herds of cattle sheep and goat may have destroyed the green cover in some areas there were floods but none of these reasons can explain the end of all cities flooding or river drying up would have had an effect only in some areas it appears as if the rulers lost control in any case the effects of the change are quite clear sites in sindh and west punjab present day pakistan were abandoned while many people moved into newer smaller settlements to the east and south new cities emerged about 1400 years later you will read about them in chapters 6 and 9